Hello, Roadrunner fans. This is JJ Perez, and welcome back to another episode of the 13 Questions podcast, where I sit down and talk with different people inside of UTSA football and ask them 13 questions through this 2022 season. Welcome back to the podcast. We took a few weeks off around the bye week just because um, the schedule with getting some players interviewed and my personal schedule didn't kind of allow us enough time to um, you know, really get the, the interviews in in the quality that, that I want while still being able to do the other responsibilities of, you know, the other interviews and stories that we have for Inside Runner Sports. So apologize for that two-week break there around the bye week, but we are back today. Uh, UTSA faces UAB this week in a critical Conference USA matchup uh, Saturday afternoon in, in Birmingham. The Roadrunners are... 6 and 2 overall and 4 and 0 in conference USA play. They have a pretty good uh they're in a pretty good position right now in the conference USA standings coming off that big win over North Texas week before last and you know everything they have that all of their goals are ahead of them. Uh they control their own destiny. Uh they they're going to be either favored or closely Close underdogs. I think this UAB game may be the only one where it's a pick 'em or close or either either way. But they should be among the favorites for their remaining four games of the season. So, you know, barring anything wild happening, uh, UTSA should be able to qualify and defend qualify for the Conference USA Championship game and defend their 2021 league title. Uh, today, we speak with a key member of UTSA's defense, safety, Kalechi Nwachuku. Um, he's been a part of the program for several years now, and over the last few seasons, he's emerged as a key contributor uh, with Rashad Wisdom out with injury for the season, for the rest, for the remainder of this season. Uh, Kalechi has taken a greater role on the defense. He's also one of the single-digit guys that was voted into that honor th- this season. So uh, we talk with Safety Kalechi Nwachuku. Uh, hope you guys enjoy. Thanks. Uh, 13 Questions Podcast here with Kalechi Nwachuku. Kalechi, this is a kind of a new podcast I started where I'm asking all the guys on the team 13 questions, but it's the same 13 questions. So I'm trying to get to know a little bit of personal life, you know, different things, and a little bit of football as well. Okay, so okay. we'll go through it a little bit. What What's your policy on naps? Do you like them? Do you take them? How long? How frequent? I think naps are a vital piece of college football. I think they're a necessity. Um, if you don't take them and you play college football, I'm not sure if you're if something isn't wrong with you, but I definitely think that they're necessary. Mine range from anywhere from an hour to three hours um, in there every day. Yeah, you got you got to get them in as a football player, right? Got to yeah, get them in. Yeah, y'all, y'all's days are super long, right? Super long. Um, they just give you that extra boost you need, you know, to finish out the day. Speaking of sleeping, how often do you have dreams about football? What was your most recent football dream about? So I usually have dreams about – I have dreams the day before games. Really? And I, it will always be – Either like making like a pick six or just dream plays that you have. Okay. Like just, just the little kids still in me, and I would say just just every week before the game. That's all. Okay. So I have yeah, those. those are good. Uh, thinking about all the people inside of UTSA football, which current person have you known the longest, and how did you all meet? No, I've known the longest probably Tremaine, T. Haynes, Brandon Madison, and Corey Mayfield Jr. Recruiting, just, recruiting just together. Uh, mm-hmm, just. Yeah. From our first official visit here till now, I mean, it's crazy that, you know, all my guys are still here and, you know, our days are, are running short. So, yeah, yeah. you know, we're starting to take advantage of them and just really just live in the moment. It seems like that was kind of like yesterday, but you look back, that's been a lot of years between then and now, right? At first it was flying by, but now I'm like, oh man, that was yeah. a long time yeah. ago. Yeah. So, <laughs> question, but, yeah, question number four. Um, if you could pick one form of social media to use and drop all the rest, which one would it be and why? I would say Twitter, just because Twitter is not only a social media outlet, it's like a news outlet, yeah. too, so you'll be able to stay up to date with news. It's also sports-centered. Yeah. You can see all the highlights from everything up to date, yeah. so I would definitely say Twitter. A lot, a lot of negativity on Twitter, though, too, right? You know, that's what comes with it. Um, yeah. There's just all those just 
just different kinds of people out there. So, you are know. you are you a big rapper guy? Love rap. Okay, who are the three greatest rappers of your generation? Of our generation, wow. Yeah. Okay. Number one is just my all time favorite artist. I gotta say Drake. Okay. Yeah. Um, number two, Lil Wayne. Okay. Number three. Jay Z, yeah, it's got to be a ge- generational yeah. thing, right? It has I, to be. I I know all those guys, so it's all, <laughs> that's all good. Some of the some of the guys I didn't quite know. So, um, question number six. This is something I struggle with personally, so feel free to sidestep it. But how, what's the best way to get out of a conversation with someone who does not want to stop talking to you? Um, you have to come up with an excuse, like for why, like. That you have to be somewhere, or just yeah. make it seem like you have to be somewhere urgent, like right away. I got you. Otherwise, they'll, they'll just keep going, keep going and going. <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, question number seven. This is a kind of a wild card question for you, for for me specifically. Tell me about your journey here to UTSA. It was uh, a little bit unique, right? That uh, you ended up as a roadrunner, right? Um. Yeah. Definitely. Um. I had got my. They were my first offer. Yep the summer of my sophomore year Mm -hmm. and i mean ever since then i committed not too far after um just and then getting a lot of offers after that or not a lot but just it had me thinking a lot and me and my dad would just have days where we're just sitting down thinking and we ultimately tried to decommit at one point and and recommit to rice yeah yeah um thank the lord that didn't happen but you know just it was a it was a, a cool journey and just you met a lot of guys that I still talk to to this day, and and you know that's that's when you're treated like royalty, and yeah, yeah. you think it's gonna be like that forever. But yeah. <laughs> it's uh, it's kind of weird how some of the decisions you think you want to make, they you know over time you realize that hey maybe that wasn't the yeah. best decision for you, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it just helps me look back and just have no regrets. Are you a big basketball guy? Huge basketball. Okay, guy. tell me who is your NBA goat: Jordan, Kobe, or LeBron? LeBron James. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. He's about to be the number one scorer of all time. The man has never gotten trouble. He's the most consistent player we've ever seen yeah. ever. Yeah. And I mean, when he was in his prime, prime, he's going to. You know, if he's on your team, you're going to the finals. Yeah. And it's just yeah. guaranteed. And I feel like I've never seen anything like that, and I don't know if I ever will again. Yeah, he was an underrated. He's an underrated defensive guy too, oh, yeah. right? Like just, everybody talks about the scoring, but he could lock down almost anybody on yeah, the court, right? Yeah. All around. Yeah, I think that's a generational thing too, as well as some of the older guys like Kobe and mm. MJ, right? So, uh, question number nine. This is, has been a question that uh, I've gotten a lot of different answers, and I'm I'm always interested at the, at the why part. So. A genie appears and offers you the opportunity to go back to the beginning of your career. You get to start over, and you get to retain all the knowledge you have now. Would you go wow. back and start all all over, or would you stay where you're at now? Wow, man! So go back to the beginning of college. College, yeah. Hmm. No, I wouldn't. I feel like everything happens for a reason, and you know, I would just I wanted to go through everything that needed to be you know gone through and that's yeah brought me to this point now and has helped shape me so i i don't think i would want to change that at all yeah no that's a great answer there question number 10 i want you to be thinking of celebrities with this question movies other sports athletes or whatever jeff trailer your position coach and coach philo <laughs> all have to miss a game an important conference game and the athletic department is giving you the authority to replace these guys but they have to be celebrities so they could market it so which three celebrities are you picking? Head coach, safeties coach, slash defense coordinator, and strength coach. Okay. Strength coach, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. The Rock, yeah. Um, head coach, head coach, Jamie Foxx, just uh-huh. because I feel like he, he's really good with his words and yeah. he, he, he would get us going. Yeah. And position coach, this might just be just... A real preference, Kevin Hart. Just because our, Hart, our yeah. meetings would be hilarious. <laughs> That's, that, that is pretty, Coach Lepp is a low key funny guy, though, right? He is. He's, yeah, a, people he's a funny don't re- guy. People, people don't realize like, he's got a little bit of a personality to mm-hmm. him, right? Yeah, yeah, he'll sneak up on you, though. Yeah, yeah. Question number 11 of 13. Thinking of, I guess, your, your lifestyle, what was the last new habit or lifestyle change that you're particularly proud of? Um,. I used to get in trouble for touching my face a lot, uh-huh. and now I can go in the entire meeting room and everything without touching my face, and 
and that's helped clean up my acne and just shout out to my mom for that one because <laughs> that one definitely is starting to pay off yeah no that's a good one uh question number 12 of 13 when you think about utsa football five years from now what are you most optimistic about and what worries you the most um, I'm most optimistic that Frank will still be the quarterback. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a heck of a story, right? <laughs> uh, I'm most worried about how just crazy the student section will yeah. be in five years. Because I know our support is just going to grow and grow and grow. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Uh, last question. Question number 13. Thinking about the rest of this season, um, what's the ceiling for you guys? How, how good can this defense be? And, you know... What's just the mindset inside the locker room as as you guys head head to the to the next part of the season? Well, we don't we don't really like to look ahead and, yeah. and set goals. Um, we like to just take each day and just try and win every day. And just if you try and get better every day, at the end of the, at the end of the season, you should be hitting full stride. And you know we do have some end of season goals like we want to win the coast and win the conference championship again, and we definitely want to win a bowl game, our first bowl game in in our history. That's our those are our two biggest goals right what, now. What does it mean to you guys that you've already kind of gone through this process and know that kind of if you trust the process, mm-hmm. you know the results will come? Is that like last season specifically? Oh, definitely, because sometimes it is hard to trust the process. And you just – you never know what can happen with college football. So just seeing how everything unfolded last year and not necessarily – I mean, it was a, a great year, but we still have some things, you know, we wish we can get back. And just knowing how everything is in the future – uh, we know that if you put in the work now and just just put just put your head down and just go to work, um, you'll be able to accomplish all the goals that you'll have in mind. Well, that'll wrap it up. Kalechi and Wachiku on the 13 Questions Podcast. I appreciate it, Kalechi. All right, JJ. Nice. Thanks for having me. Certainly appreciate Kalechi taking the time there. Uh, pretty good conversation. All of these conversations, I always come away uh, learning a little bit more about the guys. Um, sometimes... You could tell some of the questions they don't really feel comfortable answering and they'll be a little short, shorter uh, responses. And some of them, you know, they are, they surprise me. They go on long. And the again, the one question and that I'm always fascinated with is the one with the genie and being able to go back to your, the beginning of your college career. All of these guys take different paths to get to this point. And so everybody has a story. And, you know, just, I mean, I'm fascinated by Kalechi's because he almost didn't come to UTSA. And for him to kind of share that was a interesting tidbit. So I appreciate Kalechi doing that. Again, thanks to all you guys for listening and all the feedback I've got on this podcast. Uh, we'll keep it going the rest of the season. Uh, we'll be back next week with a guest to be determined. Again, if you guys uh, look for this podcast, you can find it on any major podcast platform searching the IRS pod. Again, thanks to UTSA and the players for taking the time. I'm JJ Perez. Thanks for listening to the 13 Questions Podcast.